Test, test, test. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't always. Hey, right, Mike's here. Would you guys uh, speak down to someone? Yeah. Yeah. Just so it matches. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It bugs me when I see this, you know. I agree, by the way. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Let's get this rolling. Hope everyone is having a amazing ETH Denver. It's great to be back here. Last year was my first year, and uh, it's been a lot of action, a lot of amazing innovations, a lot of companies growing rapidly in the space right now. Introducing myself, my name is Remington Rodney. I lead partnerships at Proof of Talent. We are a Web3 recruiting agency. We've been building and helping teams grow with the top talent in the space for five years now. And today we've got a legendary panel with some incredible people in the ecosystem. And we're going to be diving into everything Web3 talent, profiling, recruiting, and DAO related. So without further ado, I'd love for each of you guys to introduce yourselves and we'll get things kicked off. Yeah, I, I'm Griff Green. I'm a prolific nonprofit founder in the space, Giveth, CommonStack, DAPnode, uh, General Magic. Currently, we have a team between like kind of the amorphous products and, and companies that, that we organize together, which kind of collectively call the Giveth Galaxy. Uh, we're about 60 people, and of course we're hiring. Uh, so uh, recruitee.giveth.io if you're interested. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm uh, Benoit Kulesha. I'm the founder of uh, uh, the Web3 Talent Fair. It's an event happening every year in Paris. Uh, during the HCC uh, Paris. Uh, so it's an event where we um, connect talents and people who are builders and uh, looking for uh, awesome talents in the Web3 space. And from that event, we have uh, launched, like very recently, Good Hive. Good Hive is a collaborative recruitment platform for IT talent of the Web3 with uh, an awesome uh, way, new way of working since all the commission that is collected from the client side is given back to the community in exchange of their uh, excellence and collaborative services such as participating to the recruitment process and monitoring process. So I'm very happy to be there, uh, especially uh, among those, uh, those guys and uh, yeah. Nice. Hi, I'm Amanda Kelleher. I'm the Chief People Officer at Consensus. So we're a leading uh, Web3 blockchain software company. So you might know some of our product suite in terms of MetaMask, Linear, uh, Infura. And um, we are about 850 people now, spread across 40 countries. And um, hopefully you'll learn a bit more about us as we, we go into this talk. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And yeah, each of you guys have very diverse backgrounds and work within different company sizes, different sectors within the ecosystem, which is really exciting and can add to a lot of wealth of knowledge within this conversation. Prior to, to jumping into, I guess, the, the recruitment side, I'd love for you guys to share more about your journey into Web3, right? Some people here might not be full time in the space. You know, everyone came from a different industry before we got here. So, yeah. Um, if you want to kick it off, Griff? Sure, sure. I was a chemical engineer by training, but uh, somehow I ended up with like the first blockchain degree ever, which was a master's in digital currencies in 2016. But like that really didn't matter for me. I was, uh, my first project was the DAO back in the day. And uh, actually, a week after the DAO was hacked, I went and collected my diploma. So, you know, didn't really matter. But, uh, yeah, and I've just been uh, floating around in the public good space, really trying to figure out how we can build something better than governments. I got in this space because I hate, hate the banks and I hate the governments. However, I'm not like a violent overthrow, overthrow kind of a guy. I'm more of like a transitionary, like how do we, how do we peacefully evolve products that are better than the banks and better than governments so that just we can slowly be better and that's that's what excites me in the space that's what all my products are focused on all the all the things that i do are, are kind of in that direction yeah actually grief uh, one uh, was one of the guy i have 
follow the first uh, in, the, in the beginning of my uh, Web3 journey. Uh, to begin with, I was uh, working in, um, in, in finance, so in a regular company. I was an exec in uh, doing some uh, M&A. Uh, but after a while, I wanted to, to create something to be entrepreneur. So I joined the, um, uh, a project on the sharing economy side. And on that project, we were thinking how to share the values that we were creating with the rest of the community to earn the preference of the community and to, to uh, get more value coming in thanks to this uh, reward mechanism that we would uh, create for the community. At that time, we were uh, thinking about equity, how to, to share equity with the community, but it was very difficult in terms of regulation, in terms of perceived value for, for the community. And that's, at that time, uh, around 2015, 2016, that I started to uh, be aware of what was the Web3 and how we could use take advantage of the smart contracts uh, to uh, create some uh, new methodology, new process to spread the value among the community. So after a while, I started uh, this project like um, uh, gathering talent, uh, creating a community of talent, and uh, we believe that this is uh, the main pain of the ecosystem is to find the right talent and to bring more talent into the ecosystem so that we have created good hive and uh, once again good hive the idea is to give back all the co the value that is created to the community in order to gain the pre their preference so this is the a kind of um, uh, achievement of the tar the initial target that uh, uh, came from the sharing economy to, uh, to the actual uh, things that we are doing. Amanda? Okay, well, great background. So I'm trying to see, think about what's interesting about mine <laughs> for everyone. Um, I have actually spent my entire career in the tech space, and that was very, very much by design because very, you know, when I was getting my first job, I was something in my head said to me that if you want to do something innovative, if you want to be progressive, no matter whether you want to be in a support role or, or a technical role, you're going to have to be in the tech um, space. So, um, I, so that's what I did. Um, what's interesting is when I went to a company called ThoughtWorks and I was there for about 10 years and that was really at a time, now I'm going to show my age, um, when, uh, Agile was coming in, so I was actually working uh, in the company that Martin Fowler, who was part of writing the Agile Manifesto, we also had the emergence of the DevOps scene. And what was really exciting about that was from a human capital kind of perspective, we had to like really figure out Am I doing this right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Figure out uh, this new world that we were moving in in terms of skill sets that didn't exist in the marketplace and how we were going to get those in order to actually keep at pace with the changes in technology and software development practices, uh, et cetera. So then that led to me being headhunted to work in the startup scene in New York uh, for about 10 years, which was extremely exciting as well. And throughout that journey, what I learned about myself, and if we kind of get to it today, I'll talk a lot about how having self-awareness and understanding who you are as a person I think is a really really important part of the future of work uh, I realized that I'm extremely mission driven and that the companies that I needed to work for didn't only have to just be in tech but they had to be mission driven and so as I made my uh, la last step four years ago uh, it was sort of a no-brainer for me that that's what consensus was going to be. I really wanted to be part of something that what they were building and what they were doing was contributing to make the world a better place. And that sounds a bit corny, but it's true, right? Um, and so for me, it's tech and being very mission-driven uh, is what's kind of driven my career to date. Amazing, yeah. I think the commonality between each of you guys, right, is the mission. And I think yeah. if you're coming into this ecosystem, you need to understand what that is for you. 
uh, what impact do you want to make? Obviously, like Griff said, with the banks unbanking, giving 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 resources to people that did not have that in the past, you know, and that that's a beautiful thing. Serving the different crypto communities with within talent, you know. Um, I guess let's dive into the trends right now for for talent and recruitment. The market is very different than how it was in Q3 and Q4 right now. Um, things are looking very bullish. Um, starting out with Amanda, like, what are some trends you're seeing at consensus right now for the talent and hiring ecosystem? I mean, I don't think it's it's exclusive to consensus, but I think the thing that we need to all get ahead around is that the total addressable market of talent in Web3 is not that big. And as we move back into this more exciting phase of, of the marketplace, we're going to be once again in a position where the demand for talent far exceeds the actual amount of supply that we, we have. And so we're going to have to be extremely, extremely comfortable with hiring folks from non-Web3 backgrounds and making sure that we have the practice and the ability to support that within um, organizations. I think that DAOs, if, if there's sort of an emerging trend, DAOs were starting to pop up the, the last time we were going through a hyper um, hiring mode as a way that we were sort of seeing uh, Web2 talent who are sort of intrigued about the space were going into DAOs, in, which is quite a safe environment for them to kind of start to get their head around, understand, and then um, companies were also hiring um, out of you know people who had participated in DAOs. And so I think it is, it is our responsibility. Like if I think about my number one responsibility is if we believe in this ecosystem, we believe in what we're doing, we've got to bring more people in. And so all of your practices and everything that you're doing, you've got to get your head around that. Because if we're not developing the talent, we're fundamentally not developing our ecosystem. So. Yeah, I want to second her on this that like, I've seen these cycles so many times and it starts where like right now we're at the end of, oh yeah, there's lots of people with Web3 experience available. You know, this is like, we just had, in my opinion, assuming the four year cycle and if the cycles are the same as they've been, uh, just on the hiring cycle, the, those were probably the last set of layoffs in the last few, you know, the last few months. So there's good people with Web3 experience out right now. And I know my hiring team is like, we got to lock down the leadership now, you know, because it's hard to onboard leaders from Web2 to Web3 directly is, has been my experience. Uh, it's really nice to have someone in the leadership position with Web3 experience. And so if you are hiring for leadership positions, this is your moment. You got two to three months left, assuming the cycles are the same. Uh, and then, and then it's, they're gone. The good people are gone. And you have to really focus on converting Web2 good people to the Web3 space and having internal systems that can really train people, uh, you know, giving your leadership the time and taking away some of their responsibilities so that they can train the Web2 people that you're bringing in. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of techniques you can use, but that's, I think that trend is really important for everyone to follow in the, if you're, if you're in this space. Uh, also, I, I kind of see, uh, I see a few trends with the DAOs. I, I've noticed that um, DAOs are really not, the meme of DAOs is broken. This idea of like a leadershipless organization that you know you, everyone just kind of does stuff, right? But a new meme is kind of forming of a of DAOs that are fostering leaders and giving leaders the tools they need to be leaders within DAOs, and so really focusing, especially if you're in the DAO space, on is this person a leader or an executor? You need both, of course, but. You really need to like uh, uh, give people within DAOs that leadership position, and uh, and those are the DAOs that are successful, the ones that can foster leaders and help them take on a crew, do their thing with uh, with the DAO being more of an accountability measure than a decision making process. Uh, yeah. I um, to go in your way. Um, I can uh, give a, a few figures from uh, the last cycle. So starting in 2020, 
to 2022, the number of jobs there have been multiplied by eight, like in like two years. Uh, so I hope the trend will follow the same path for this uh, hopefully opening cycle, which uh, what is looking now for an opening cycle. Um, and uh, another thing about DAOs, uh, yeah, I was pretty much, I was a lot involved in DAOs in the, in the beginning of my learning curve. Um, at that time, my frustration was that the DAOs were more about um, governance, like uh, decentralized governance, more about the tools, about uh, some uh, uh, learning things, but there was not really like a value coming back to the, to the members of the DAO. The, there was a, the main use case where like either investment DAO or learning DAO. And um, so that's also what triggers our project, which is to give back some real value to the, to the, to the members of the DAO through the commission that is paid that by the client, which is uh, funneled back to the community to reward their participation and, their, um, and, and um, the, the, the fact that they bring value to, to the final clients and to the community as a whole. Well. Yeah, really, really incredible points. And, you know, even in the more immediate right now too, like obviously at Proof of Talent, we're, we're taking out a ton of new clients right now, which is incredible. We're seeing a ton of new non-technical roles, which is another great signal that companies are reaching a level of maturity to bring these products to market. They're, they're finding PMF, they want to get in the hands of other partners, other businesses, so really love the points that you guys made. And I think you guys brought, the, brought up DAOs as well. And I want to dive into the future of work. What does the future of work look like for the Web3 industry? Um, Griff, you want to start on this one? Sure, sure. Uh like I said before, it's really about fostering leaders within DAOs. I feel like uh, I feel like the future of work looks a lot like the startup scene. Entrepreneurs coming into ecosystems and economies and really making a name for themselves there. You know, having this freedom to work from anywhere. Uh, you know, be your own kind of entrepreneur inside of a micro economy or a uh, micro economy compared to like normal economies, nation state economies. And, and so right now, you know, like you were just saying, there's a lot of this, ex like uh, people think you have to be really deep into tech to come into the crypto space. And it's just not true at all. I, I'm pretty sure most, almost all crypto organizations that I know have, I mean, not all, but any organization that has more than 30 people as a, is over 50% not tech people. You know, it just, the BD, the, the marketing, these, these other systems are really critical. So it really takes a village. And so don't be discouraged if you're not a tech person. You know, that, that's, that's gonna be important. As far as the future of work goes, there are a lot of structures in place in like normal HR scenes that just don't jive with the, the vibes of a DAO. Right, like uh, within within these leadership structures, I do think that there is like the leader who's got to own their own team and be able to hire, fire, and have a lot of agency within the structure or within the organization, which generally is not how larger organizations are run. Uh, so I I like to see this like small squads uh, attacking things as as a potential trend that seems to be having uh, success within DAOs. Uh, but also, there still needs to be a lot of internal communication, uh, and you know, forum posts are not going to do it. So I know with Giveth, we we have systems like Buddy System, where instead of having like, uh, of course, you need these. Um, what do you call it? like retrospectives and feedback cycles to be built into your into your DAO? But there's not always this clear hierarchical structure where you have like the leadership who then is you know you know the line a chain of command like that that's so clear. So we do kind of a buddy 
system where peers are reviewing each other anytime and along with like 360 review cycles where uh, you know where anyone can give reviews to anybody else and we still have like a mini squad within our organization that is making sure everyone is playing those games right it's it's like a different kind of HR because if you just leave people to themselves they're not going to fill out the review form on the people they work with there's not right so you still have to always give people responsibilities and hats to make sure that the organizational structure will function you know these things don't just sprout themselves up we can rethink it a little bit but the roles always need to be there I would say I'll pass it though yeah so still uh, a bit of numbers as you said uh, in the space if you look at uh, the job offers all across the, uh, the space, there's only like 40% of the job offers who are for IT positions. Uh, all the rest is marketing, um, uh, HR, um, well, uh, design, uh, regulation, uh, compliance, all, all of that. So there's a lot of different needs in the space and, um, and um, Anybody can find his fit uh, as long as they are passionate about Web3 and they will find, they will find some uh, very interesting uh, jobs. Because when you enter the space, you are making it growing and um, you are participating to the growth of those ideas of decentralization, uh, which is in my mind uh, what the future of work is uh, looking like. Um, the future of work will be decentralized. It will bring more freedom to the workers. It will help to spread the value across the, in a very fair, in a much more fairly way to the one who contributes to the creation of that very same value. Um, I strongly believe that uh, this decentralization will happen in more and more vertical of the economy. Uh, the traditional structure, like the company structure that we have known all over the 19th and 20th century, uh, are still a, a good future, but, but definitely the new organization will be more and more decentralized, and it will be more effective because people will be more um, willing to, uh, to create value since the, the value that they create will come back to them. And um, one more thing is that um, we have today among employees, workers, all, all across the, the West at least, there is a strong feeling of disengagement. Like, um, I don't know the statistic in, in, in US, but in Europe, it's like 90% of the employees who say that they don't find a meaning in their job. They are disengaging from their job. And with this uh, decentralization happening, I think it it's, is bringing back a lot of um, uh, interest and value to people to create, to create uh, to work and to create value for, for a, a larger goal. Uh, in this case, I think uh, all, of, all of us, we are, we are looking forward to bring decentralization more and more to this world. And uh, yeah. And I, I just want to jive off that really quick because uh, along with that decentralization and increase in agency, there's like a responsibility on the individual to like set their own boundaries. It's really easy when 90% of the rest of the world is disengaged, you know, like 80% of the crypto space is so engaged that they cross their own boundaries with their partners and their families trying to work all the time because uh, of remote culture and various things. So having systems in place to make sure that people are setting their own boundaries and not burning out uh, is like really critical. 
Yeah, I think I think that's interesting. Going back to some of the things that you spoke about, Griff, the first time, what um, is really interesting is a lot of those practices you're employing uh, are being pulled from uh, what were originally software development practices, right? They were, Actually, they came out of the Agile movement, so that's where we first sort of started to see them. And the reason that I'm saying that is I think that we need to be looking closely at a lot of the things that are going on in our ecosystem, looking at DAOs, because they as historically we've seen in terms of us pulling out practices from software development and then standardizing them into the way that we operate as a company, I think DAOs are a leading indicator for us in terms of what the future of work is going to be like and what people are going to want. So just think about that because it is all patterns um, and I think that that's what we're seeing now and that that, that will kind of show us. I, um, I'm going to like really go out there. like. I firmly believe we are moving into an age of community and I think that the actual fundamental relationship between employer and employee is going to completely change. And that is going to, it will impact how we do compensation structures, it will impact how we uh, do learning and development. I think organisations as they exist today over the next sort of like three, five, ten years are going to look completely different. And I think we need to look at the way DAOs are operating, the way that the people in um, our space are working right now and use them as leading indicators of what is motivating them, how they want to be compensated, the kind of work. I actually think, um, you were talking a little bit like almost like squads, right? Little like pods of groups working together. I'd even push it out even further where it's not even teams. I actually see a world where everything is more project um, oriented and so like here's a project we'll promote it and that and individuals will drop in and drop out based on their skill sets their preferences their strengths into multiple different projects that might be existing within a company so I actually think we'll move away from that kind of team concept and more into kind of like a, a, a project oriented. So I'd encourage all of you to be thinking about like really pushing the boundaries in terms of your thinking about like what the future of work is going to look like. Cause, and it's going to change everything that we're doing. I think I actually think HR teams will start to look and operate much more like what you see DevRel and community teams operating like. Um, so DevRel and community teams are actually engaging with your external audience and then I think you'll have a similar kind of like team inside that is focused on the community within a company and building those kind of practices. So yeah, you know how you decided how you describe that structure is very much how we work in the Giveth Galaxy where we have like our designer squads and our it, it, we call it, kind of call them uh, uh, they're kind of two different verticals. There's the project vertical, and then like the set, like your skill set vertical, or I guess horizontal. And so we have like the designers are kind of floating between projects, the the developers are floating between projects. But then you have that one product manager who's really focused on each project and tying everything together. Yeah, pulling resources as they need, and people within the DAO are kind of floating around. Yeah, which, be, which is actually changing a mindset. You're not thinking about it in the concept of teams, you're thinking about it in terms of the overarching kind of project that or product that you're, you're kind of building. And just bringing groups of people together fluidly over time as different kind of needs are, are, arise in order to continue building that, that yeah. product, yeah. Yeah, and the challenge there is the coopetition. How do you make sure that, like, you know, the leaders aren't fighting for that great designer, you know, when they both have deadlines and stuff, and making sure that everyone's, you know, I talking look, to you each know, other. Like, I, I actually don't, like, mind the idea of, like, people fighting. I think that really great conversations come out of constructive conflict. And so um, that actually also teaches leadership skills, because if you've got to sit down with someone else and hash out why that one particular resource needs it to be with you, you rather than them yep. uh, it really pushes you so don't be afraid of that I would say no. like bring that on you want those conversations exactly conflict resolution and conflict management more importantly is the way is so critical for these structures to work you know you can't just be like firing people when they when people get angry with each other because it's a DAO how do you fire you know it's harder to fire people in the current in the future of work so uh, making sure that there's space and strategies for these conflicts and natural 
natural like competitive na the competitive nature of these systems for the, as long as there's space for people to talk you know and ideally also real life opportunities to meet so that they don't dehumanize each other these yeah. things are so critical and that's what i was getting at is that i think everyone needs to be thinking about this as an age of community and i'll say the community we're no longer companies we're no longer trying to control people when you start to think about a group of people coming together around a shared mission and that they're building something and that they're a community you'll start to think about all your practices and processes and things that you need to do that are relative to that rather than traditional company mindset griff i want to get a quick question to you as well too like for some people in the audience DAOs may be a very new com concept could be a novelty working in a DAO full time can you give us some examples of some of the top DAOs in the ecosystem i mean the top DAOs. it's it's interesting the top DAOs are generally l2s or like uh ecosystems with huge grant funding so like optimism arbitrum uh i consider ens a top DAO, uh uniswap you know these these uh these systems that are managing infrastructure and they have like a decentralized method of deciding who gets the you know this this pot of funds that was set aside at the issuance of the token to be like kind of creating network effects for the community you know and that usually those decisions are kind of structured in a DAO like fashion and that i'd say that's the the most common pattern for DAOs. And so it's like Aave and just the, it's either an L2 or a huge DeFi project. Like those are, those are the biggest DAOs, but maybe you guys have other ideas. What are the other big DAOs? Um, yeah, you mentioned uh, the big project, uh, the big D app who has been on the, uh, on the space. Uh, you mentioned also optimism, but uh, of course, uh, I think uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin is uh, are the first DAO, in fact, um, and uh, they appear to be very successful. Um, so, yeah. Eigenlayer, all these uh, staking protocols are also becoming DAOs. Polkadot, you know, uh, but these are weird DAOs, you know. These are the DAOs where it's like you got to be a DevOps dude to participate in governance. So. I, I think there's a lot of variety out there. What I, I'll just put a different twist on it, and this is kind of coming back to a point I was making earlier. There is so many options out there that really what's important is to think about what motivates you and what what you maybe whether it's you're motivated by learning a particular skill set or you're motivated by the mission or like I think this is like really the opportunity to be thinking about what do you want and then I think you're going to find it, you know. Yeah, because it's not just big DAOs, right? right? There's lots yeah. of small DAOs out there. And there's lots of companies, too. You know, not everything needs to be a DAO, and a lot of things work better not as a DAO, you know? Uh, a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, make, making a pivot from there, too. Um, like I said, market is looking very green right now. Lots of opportunity for candidates coming into the space. How can they best position themselves to land an opportunity in this market? I'll start with Ben Ma. Um, so you mean um, how a, a new buy, a newbie coming in the space uh, would uh, find some good? Uh, could could be a newbie. Could be someone that was uh, impacted with the layoffs. I mean, there's a ton of competition right now. Like, how is someone going to differentiate themselves in this new bull market and and land an opportunity? Well, um, so if you're a newbie, uh, we'll start with that point. Uh, the best thing is to to join uh, the event. I think uh, it's a very best starting point is to meet the community to to uh, to get uh, some um, hands on what are the value uh, that we are talking about in in this community and uh, it, it and to feel the vibes because uh, when you you are in this kind of event you you. Um, there's some non-verbal communication. You just feel it. You just feel that the space is uh, incredible. There's a lot of incredible people. And once you're there and you're hooked, uh, then I, I, I strongly advise to, uh, to, to go join a DAO, discuss with some other folks, um, uh, contribute to some, uh, some, uh, 
some stuff that will uh, bring value to the space. And that's how you're building your own uh, skills and uh, legitimacy for the space. Um, yeah, and then uh, find a job because there's a lot of jobs, there's a lot of needs. This is actually the main pain point of the ecosystem is to find some uh, uh, talents uh, who are passionate about what they're doing. And uh, the wall industry during the last cycle uh, was uh, seeking for them, for, for those people who, who, who love to, to create value in the space. So, yeah. M my advice is be picky. Think about where, where is your intrinsic motivation? I, I see so many people in this space that are ruled by their passion, and those are the successful people. So w don't just get a job. You're like, oh, you know, Arbitrum is really big, and I'm not into DeFi, but it looks like there's money there. Dude, you're not going to last long. Don't, don't bother. Think of, figure out, like, examine the space. What are you interested in? What, do, what change do you want to make in the world? What, you know, what excites you about these spaces? What are some projects they always wanted to learn about? Pick, like, two or three and start contributing. So like, like Benoit said, like, make, some, make some impact there. Create some value without making, being paid. You know, get a, get a vibe check. Do, is, are these your people? Who are the leaders? Get a lay of the land. You know, DAOs, for better or for worse, are very political. You know, it, like, who are the leaders? Who are the decision makers? Make sure to make an impression with them. Uh, you know, find out, like, don't get stuck behind the, the, you know, the walls, right? Find out where you can really make an impact. Look at their issues. Make a pull request. Depending on where you're at in the ecosystem, you know, what value you can create. Uh, what what do you really want to do? Like in DAOs and, and in this ecosystem in general, even in just regular companies, it's like what are you intrinsically motivated as far as like higher level topics, and what do you want to do with your career? You know, you really in this space, you know. We're not so picky on what you've been doing. You know, if you're like, yeah, I'm a designer, but you know, I wanted to be a dev, so I'm going to do Like, a buddy of mine, his name's Mitch. Uh, he's probably one of the best smart contract engineers we have. I met him, he was a chef with a high school education. He, he was at my Burning Man camp and he did a great job uh, cooking, you know? Yeah, yeah, we know, like I see some thumbs up. Mitch is the bomb, he makes bomb food. You know, he's a professional chef. He went to, you know, he started contributing and giveth more as like a project manager and then he eventually, he went to a smart contract boot camp and now he's one of our lead smart contract engineers. Where do you want to take your career? Make it, you know, this is a this is an ecosystem of agency, so you got to take it. You got to take it yourself. I feel so hyped up now. Like what a pep talk. <laughs> um, I I think the important thing here is that no matter what role you do, you have highly highly transferable skills. So whatever you're doing today, if you're in Web two, chances are that exact role exists within within Web three. I think my number one piece of advice. Um, because we are going to be, like we said earlier, moving into a phase where we're going to be hiring more out of Web2 than we, we are anywhere else, is you have got to demonstrate a basic level understanding and passion around the ecosystem, right? If there's just like one thing you do, that's what I would say do. Like your skills, your capabilities, whatever, it all translates. There's, there's no problem there. But be passionate about the ecosystem lead with curiosity you're not going to learn it all be kind to yourself it's really hard to kind of get your head around but pick one kind of like aspect of it learn it really well have curiosity and then just go and like apply for the roles but that that would be my number one advice but also what griff said like actually like make sure you want to work at that company and do that actual role that you're applying for because that's really important reflection right coming into this space it's a wild wild west so like you guys each said, take the time to truly reflect on what aspect of the ecosystem gets you excited. Okay, you're going to wake up every single day excited to build towards this mission that we're all building towards as well, of decentralization. Um, so with that being said, I know we've got um, about nine minutes left in the, the panel. I wanted to just open up the opportunity for any questions um, that you guys have. We have incredible leaders on the stage, co-founders, executives for some of the top companies in the space. So... Just want to give you guys that opportunity.
super, super valuable advice you guys are giving. I've been in the Web3 space for a while, and it's just like so resonant, and everybody here definitely is gaining a lot from this panel. Thank you. Um, I think that there's probably, at least from my experience, and I know people that I've talked to, it's like cutting through the noise of just feeling like you're throwing your resume into the abyss and hoping that like some sort of algorithm picks up you know, the keywords that are going to, somebody's gonna care about. Like, what is your advice for cutting through, other than, which was great advice, to just start contributing and start showing up and be there, like whether it's in IRL or whether it's in the forums or whether it's in the Discord, whatever it is, in terms of the application of putting, you know, your resume out there, your LinkedIn profile out there, whatever it might be, what are the mechanics that you think are most effective? Oh, I'll jump in. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, I think that these applicant tracking systems, and unfortunately, we need to use them because we do we do get a, lo a load um, of resumes, in particularly like uh, right now. But what I would say is, so always do that. Like always, like put your application in. Like that's really important. You need to be like in that system. Um, but going back to sort of the notion of community, and community also a big kind of basis of that is relationships. And so I think any way that you can be establishing relationships within the wider ecosystem community. I think coming to events like this, participating in hackathons, um, any way where you can be kind of like interacting and contributing within the community will allow you to then build either an online or an in real life kind of relationship and then you meet you know, more people that can then complement kind of like putting your, um, putting you know, just putting your resume forward. But I think the relationship bit, which is really interesting because I think for a long time we moved away from that um, and what went more down the applicant tracking kind of thing. I think that it's coming back and, and building those relationships is really important. I love memes, personally. I just love memes. Throw, throw a meme in your resume. Make, do something to make yourself stand out. What makes, show, show off your passion. You know, everything else that we said here, you know, in your cover letter, why do you want this job? What makes you intrinsically motivated to, like, do a good job? You know, I can't tell you, you know, it, it just sucks. But the reality of hiring is you get a lot of duds. And the duds are there for the 9 to 5, collect a paycheck, and extract. What makes you not an extractor? right that's that's what you got to prove to people uh getting through the first like um like always apply you have to apply no no matter what even in giveth we're only 60 people in the galaxy uh but you know it's kind of like this interesting at least from us internally it's like you have to apply but then you know the the hr crew the people reviewing the applications if you have the skills and you match the job description uh you know, then you'll probably make it to the, uh, across the front lines. But also the person, at least the way we do it, we usually have like a person who's kind of in charge of w going to be that person's like onboarder uh, who they're going to work with. And so they also kind of get to look at things. And if they, if they're like, oh yeah, I've seen that guy's handle, you know, I've seen this guy, you know, I've seen him float around. Like that's, that's going to get you, that's going to get you past that initial phase, you know, so uh, I, I also think social media is really important. I, I can't tell you how many people don't add their Twitter account. Like, dude, like I'm, I want to check out your Twitter. You know, I, like it's crypto. You got to have a Twitter. You know, you got to be active in the space uh, to stand out. You know, and, and if you don't have a Twitter account, like I don't know where you stand on some of the, the cool shit that's going on. Yeah, I think um, one of the most critical uh, things to to get higher in the space is to develop your own network uh, because there is a lot of referral uh, things happening in between uh, uh, professional in the network um, and uh, yeah participating in this kind of event um, doing hackathon um, putting uh, on your resume some training uh, some proof that you have gained some uh, some skills uh, about the the ecosystem Plus, the network uh, will uh, almost certainly guarantee you a job in the space, especially if we're coming back to the a bull, a bull, uh, bull market now. There's lots of interesting certification programs, like the Token Engineering Academy. You know, you put that shit on there, it looks good. 
Thank you guys for that. <laughs> a lot of great answers there. I know we've got one more question. Yeah, uh, first off, thank you for the shout out on optimism. Love optimism. Uh, been there for a while. Um, closer. Um, so I'm in an age where I get a lot of mentoring requests. Uh, like I'm the only degenerate among my friendship group and all their kids want to get into crypto. Is the, I mean, it was really great advice. Is it the same thing for a college student who doesn't have a career, get into a project, participate in the DAO, and then you know, make your move to try to get some kind of more formal employment? Or is it something different for a college-age student? I think it is different because it's hard to hire a college-age student to be a leader. You, you know, it's good to have leadership experience, so they have to come in. I would say they come in, in ex as executors. I'm sorry, are you, are you specifically talking about someone who wants to move into the space or a college student applying? Just, okay, just right. to repeat his question, advice for entry-level college kids to get into Web3. Right. So first and foremost, I'm going to give them a bit of advice, which is make sure they're... Um, most of us are virtual uh, remote companies. So first and foremost, I would make sure I'm giving them advice around, is that the kind of environment that you want to work in? And I think that there is some skill sets that you need to be able to be comfortable with that. Good communication skills, you know, you're okay being on Zoom all of the time, you know, all of the, those kind of things. So I w just f at the individual level. And then I think that in terms of sort of how do they apply, how do they make themselves attractive, they've got to find their little niche of how they can be part of um, the ecosystem in some way. So whether that be participating in hackathons, going into a DAO, being really prolific and putting opinions up on Twitter, like figure out like what their like little niche is around the space and really kind of um, optimize for that um, in themselves. Because that's, that's what will help them in terms of uh, standing out and also people being aware of them. I want to double down on hackathons. No matter what you do, even if you're not a developer, get into hackathons. Yeah, and I'd like to add that um, there are some uh, talent fair, like the Web3 talent fair happening. Uh, I know that there is a University of Michigan organizing a, a, a big uh, talent fair this year for students. Uh, so, yeah, let's join those fairs and uh, get involved as much as you can. Amazing. Amanda, and I'd love to give you the opportunity to share you know, what you guys have going on at Consensus as well with uh, the survey. Oh, yeah. So oh, you can see it up on there. So there is a global survey on Web3 talent that we are partnering with uh, an agent, uh, like a, a survey agency and a number of other um, crypto companies. I really, really, really encourage you to complete this survey. I encourage you to promote this survey. We need as many of folks in our ecosystem participate. We've never really done anything like this in the world before. And this is really part of being an, uh, a, a good community member and it's really going to be able to drive out some of those areas and things that we don't really know about Web3 talent right now in order to be able to put it into the hands of people that are going to be shaping the new policies or the, the way that we work. So please participate, please promote. It's really, really, really important and you can, you can get the code up there on the screen. Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys. This, this was incredible. If we can give a round of applause to our panelists. And for Remy. Thanks, man. All right.